Hi, are you struggling with the time required for one-on-one -on -one coaching and online courses simply don't pay as much? Well, in this lesson, we're learning all about cohort groups. So that way you can scale and teach one to many, conserve your time, make more money, and deliver better personal results for your students. Hi, I'm Angel from RT Course Experts, and we help creative online course teachers with their tech. In this lesson, we're learning all about cohorts for online courses. What is it? Why use it? And then we'll go into a how-to guide, we'll go into an example, and then we'll summarize our top tip. First of all, what is a cohort? Well, a cohort is a fancy word when we're teaching to groups of students at the same time and they go through a curriculum together in a small group. Now, why would you use a cohort? Well, students can learn more deeply by adding peer discussions and reviews to scheduled lessons. So they're not just learning online by themselves or like reading a book by themselves, but they're doing it with a group at the same time and they're progressing through all the lessons together. They're gonna to ask good questions. They're gonna ask personal questions that's gonna be very specific to their challenges. And together, the students go through the course. Let's go over a how-to guide about how you would actually consider using cohorts and adding cohorts to your different products, services, bundles, and programs. First of all, you should identify courses that would benefit from teacher, coach, hand-holding where you're really with the students all the way through. You're not just dumping information. What are the courses that students could really benefit from taking little pauses, taking little timeouts, taking little quizzes, or seeing some extra stuff, or them practicing and then you giving them feedback as they go through each step of their learning transformation. Next, you're gonna to wanna to estimate the demand at various prices and profit margin for your extra time. Because if you're doing an online course, it's one to infinity, right? You do it once, it goes out to everybody. That's great. You get a high margin, assuming that there's a demand. But then there's gonna be other people that are willing to pay more for your extra time. Let's just say you're doing 20 people in your group. You're going to be spending several times a week going over the lessons, answering questions. You might have office hours, all this sort of stuff. So there's extra time that you're going to use to, to deliver this course. So you got to make sure that the demand is there and that the right price is there to make up for your extra work. Next, you're going to want to choose a good cohort group size. So you might want to start small, maybe five, maybe 15, 20, 25. Then over time, you can get better at handling groups. You might have an assistant that helps answer questions on Zoom chat, et cetera. And also, over time, you can add more groups. So you have like, maybe you have one cohort at a time, the spring and the fall, and then later you can maybe overlay them so that every two months you have a cohort starting even though the courses may last you know two or three months that's okay so you just kind of stagger them and stack them so you're going to learn and choose an appropriate cohort group size just to get your reps in right get your skills in learn your procedures document your checklist all that sort of stuff then you can increase your group size and increase the number of cohorts that you do in any one time as well as adding cohorts to other courses, not just one course. Next, you're gonna pick out the actual dates. Remember, it's not just online where you upload a course and that's it. You actually need to schedule it in, put it on a calendar. The students need to schedule it in. They need to verify how many weeks is it, you know, what time zone is it, on what days of the week is it, and you know, what do you do about holidays, which days are skipped, and, and also thinking about the different kinds of students that you might have from different time zones or countries, right? And then also a runway. You want to pick out a cohort uh, schedule that's far enough that you can market it and get ready for it. And again, once you get going with that first few co cohorts, 
then you can have a system and you can kind of crank them out a little faster. As the lead creative teacher, you're gonna to wanna to partition out your course resources. There might be some resources, your lessons, your course, your, your quizzes, et cetera, your discussion rooms. So you might have some of your courses that are still doing it online that are strictly online courses. There's others that are online courses with this new cohort-based lessons where they get personal coaching and training. There might be slightly different approaches here. You have your core resources. You might want to tweak some or make some new ones and then kind of partition them out into different sets of class resources, depending on which of your courses you're doing. At some point in the future, you'll also have to set up your sales or your sign up page. So a traditional sales page for an online course might let them review the overview curriculum, see testimonials, learn about the teacher, et cetera. When you're doing a cohort group where there's coaching involved, you're gonna to wanna to have more details about the schedule, how does it work? The, the FAQs are gonna be different. You're gonna leverage your self-paced marketing content for your traditional online course, or maybe you're making a totally new one and that's fine. Then you're gonna to wanna to add in all these extra considerations and questions. When, when, it, when our office hours, every two weeks, we're gonna look at the progress of everybody's individual student work as they're making stuff, as they're designing stuff, as they're learning how to play, to play music or perform. It depends on what you wanna do, but you're gonna want some of these really valuable things to be highlighted in your sales page. Next, you're gonna to wanna to set up your logistics for your team. What days, what times, what's the meeting link? Which Zoom are you using? Is there an email that you're gonna use? Do you wanna have a different email or do you want everything to flow through support at your company name? Or maybe you might have a, a custom email that you create just for this group. You're gonna to wanna to pick out your team who's gonna support you. You're gonna to wanna to hire them or expand the roles. You're gonna to have to describe uh, what their extra work is in a description. You might have to create some procedures for your team. Here's how we onboard. When they sign up, we're gonna send them this information and then we're gonna welcome them. If we don't see them in class, like how many minutes are you gonna wait before you start the course when you're actually waiting for everybody? Will each of your lessons be recorded and who's gonna upload that somewhere? So all this sort of stuff. Your students should expect a real calendar invite not just like, hey, we meet every Tuesdays and Thursdays. Here's an actual calendar invite. It has the meeting link. It has a description and, and all those kinds of things. Finally, you're going to take this cohort and you're going to take this cohort lesson and go to market. You're going to promote it. You're going to use your existing audience. You might use your email list or followers. Remember, you're going to start small. So you might want to pick and choose a subset of your big audience or maybe just a portion of your email list or your Facebook group. Hey, I'm thinking of doing this course. It's let me know if you're interested or you might send out a survey and based on who responds, you might ask some questions about what they're interested in learning. Also, a survey would be a great way for you to get smarter on what to include in your online course that has a cohort component. Anyways, you're gonna wanna reach out to your audience, let them know it's coming get some feedback, then, and then you can actually go ahead and make the pitch. Let them know the price, let, point them to your sales page, let them know that you're ready for students to sign up, that the course is open for enrollment. So you can kind of make a splash, and if you need to, you can go a little bit bigger and broader until you get the right size number of students for your new course. Now let's check out an example. Let's say that you have a lighting course. It could be for photographers, videographers, for people who have a studio at home, but they need to get smarter on lighting, having multiple lights and that kind of thing. Get rid of the glare on glasses and baldness and don't have the window, create that weird shadow effect. So they're gonna learn about lighting. And let's say that the teacher seeks to grow. So they already have a lighting course, but they want more. Maybe that teacher needs more income or is trying to get more ideas or wants to deliver higher value, wants a better reputation. That teacher would then go ahead and design a cohort-based course with more access, with more access and student. So the business owner 
who is an expert at lighting and now has this whole kind of academy on lighting and videography, the business owner now adds a new high income stream because it's more than the online course. And all the interactivity that comes from the coaching and the conversations with the expert from these students who are trying to learn from this expert, that's going to create great learning experiences for the students. They're really going to deeply learn by hearing these stories. You as an online course teacher will get all sorts of great ideas. So you're going to get lots of great ideas as you're working with these students instead of just one to many in a traditional online course. So let's go over what this sales page might look like. If you have an existing lighting course, now you're going to make a new lighting course that's slightly higher cost but delivers so much more. So you're gonna have a title, you're gonna have all the key things of a traditional online course sales page. Learn all the essential skills. You're gonna call out, hey, 25 online lessons. You can take it anywhere, anytime, as you wish. And then you're gonna layer in all the great coaching stuff that you're gonna do. Six weeks of group workshops and now you can use any phrase you want. You can say, you know, personal lessons, one-on-one. -on -one. Well, one-on-one -on -one might not be accurate if it's, you know, it's a small group, but coaching, program, however you want to frame it up, you're going to call out the value there that you have six weeks of group coaching or six weeks of personalized lessons. You're going to call out that they're going to transform their skills alongside classmates. So they're learning with classmates. When their classmates have questions, they're going to learn from them. They can chime in. You know, it's not one-on-one. -on -one. They're going to learn from their classmates' questions. And every classmate might be at a slightly different skill. Maybe some are already in the industry and changing careers. Maybe some are trying to break into an industry or go up a level. Go from a junior position in a studio or in a movie set up the levels, right? Then you're going to call out, these are groups of 10 to 25 students meeting over Zoom. Now you're going to pick out your number, but you're going to let them know that, hey, these are groups. We're meeting over Zoom. You can ask questions and you don't have to get into the details, whether you're going to actually use a poll, whether you're going to mute your students or unmute them at a certain time, or you don't have to get into that or every student will have five minutes at the end. You, you, you don't have to get into that. You're just going to let them know, hey, these are groups of students. Small groups are, are historically known to be better. They deliver more value. They're personal instead of you being one of a hundred, like a, a lecture room. So it's not exactly one-on-one -on -one -on -one coaching, which you could offer at a much higher price, but it's delivering a lot of great personalized lessons and much more uh, than you would get on just basic online courses. You're going to come up with some fun names. For example, shadow weekly small group teacher office hours. So they're going to be able to maybe for a half hour answer any questions and, and, and clarify any content in the course. So you could just basically offer office hours in addition to the main lessons, which you could either fully teach or you could review the highlights of every lesson. Finally, you're going to let them know that there's a discussion group. Maybe you have a funny name like the Illuminate Discussion and Resource Sharing Areas where they can have chats and talk to their peers. So they're not only learning from you, they're asking each other and sharing their examples. They're asking good questions. This takes the load off your team as well because sometimes the students can help each other with their study groups and whatnot. So that's an example of a sales page that highlights the benefits of a course. So if you want to level up, use cohort courses. They earn more because of the guided learning and personal support that you provide for every single student. So let's summarize. Here are the top things you need to know for cohort courses. You can identify the course. What's your foundation that you can extend? Pick a course that adds value where your conversations are actually really en enriching the student's uh, knowledge. You're going to start off small with small cohort group sizes and then later expand to multiple cohorts at the same time. You got to pick out your dates, the times, the duration. You're going to spend some time as a teacher partitioning out 
all your educational resources, your curriculum, your lesson, your discussion, your assignments, uh, your resource guides, all that sort of stuff. Chop it up and if you need to create variants that are used just for the core. Take your traditional sales page and either create a new one or add in this other tier, this other option that shows up at the bottom of the sales page that lets student, that lets prospects choose the cohort option. Figure out all your internal logistics as you, for you and your team. You know, how are you gonna do it? What's the procedure? What's the link? How do you communicate? What happens when students do certain things? What do you do on holidays? Figure out all that internal stuff. And finally, Go to market, start small, notify a small group, maybe use a survey, get, find out some interest, and with that, hit them up with an offer. And if you need to, go ahead and reach out to a slightly larger audience or tweak your offer, and then go ahead and enjoy the benefits of you offering not only online courses, but courses with online cohorts, as well as future things, maybe one-on-one -on -one coaching or offering a community. Those are other good options for the future. So now you're a lot smarter on using cohorts for your online courses to not only deliver more value, but also to earn a lot more money. To learn more, check out the info and links in the notes. If you're loving this stuff, subscribe to keep leveling up your creative business. And if you need any tech help with your courses, community, or teacher website, visit www.rtcourseexperts.com. Thanks for hanging out. Let's stay in touch.